Hello, welcome to SmartBird 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. I'm an instructional technology specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. In our last video segments, we talked about InkAware, specifically InkAware with Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and today we're going to focus on using InkAware with PowerPoint. How you interact with your board with, with, with PowerPoint uh, has some unique features. I want to go ahead and demonstrate that to you today. So let's go back to our smart board and go and take a look at PowerPoint. So I'm going to open up my PowerPoint document, which is called Company Strategies. I'm going to go and click on that. I'm going to open it up. And there it is. I'm going to expand it out. And there we go. Expand it out. And I'm going to go ahead and start my slideshow, the, my actual presentation show. So I'm going to go to Slideshow. I'm going to click on From Beginning. And there is my beginning slideshow. Now, one thing I want to focus to you on today is I'm using a smart screen overlay, and it tends to be very sensitive to my, to my finger or my touches that I have on the board. And if you're in your classroom, you won't experience some of the little misbehaviors that I may be getting today. So don't let that uh, scare you away today, anything that might be happen on my particular board. Your 600 series board in your classroom is going to work pretty flawlessly with PowerPoint. So just always be confident that your, uh, your, your technology is going to be working for you today. Now, as I focus back here on my screen, I have my PowerPoint set up here. Now, what's really neat, if I want to, notice on the very bottom here, I've got a floating toolbar. But I can go ahead and just grab that, and I can move it to any side that I'm presenting on. But sometimes as you're, as you're teaching and so forth, you may not want to refer back to that particular floating toolbar. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I might need a, a camera shot of me actually showing the board over here. If I want to advance the slide, I can do two, actually I can do three things. I can advance the slide by using the floating toolbar and advancing the slide. Or if I want to be more suave with my particular presentation with my, with my students, I can double tap on the screen. When I double tap on it, it's going to move the screen, the slide forward. So I'll be going double tap. And there it goes. It advanced my slide. And if I click it again, it'll advance it one more time. Now there's also another trick. If I click or tap one time, and if I tap to the right of that, it's also going to advance it again. So if you, if I, let's try to do it up here. I'm going to tap and go that way to my right and notice it advance my slide. Now, if I want to go backwards to go back and review a slide, I can do two things as well. I can go ahead and use the floating toolbar and click on that, and it's going to advance it back. Or I can click and then click to the left of my last click or last touch, and it'll, it'll go in reverse. So I'm going to be more dramatic in my movement, but you don't have to be as dramatic in your classroom. So I'm going to go click and click, and it moved it back. Notice I'm going from here to my left. And it moved it back, to keep going backwards. And there we go to my main screen that I have right there. So that's one way you can kind of advance your screens without having to actually use the floating toolbar that's there. Now, so let's say as I'm presenting to my students and we're talking about these particular issues, let's say here, what infrastructure do you have at your workstations? And let's say you're, well, and those kind of advanced for most students that we're going to be using. but if they have any ideas that you want to write down or, or, or use with that you want to remember, of course, because you want to interact with your students. So in getting your ideas, all you need to do is simply grab your pen. Now, on my overlay screen that I have here, I only have access to one pen, and that's going to be in black. However, in your particular board that you have, you're going to have a blue, a green, a black, and a red pen. Whatever pen that you choose to pick, it's going to write in that particular color and embed it into that particular PowerPoint document. So let me go ahead and do here, let's say I wanted to highlight the word software, draw a circle around it. What I can go and do now is grab my pen, and I can draw a circle around it, and now I can go and highlight all of my particular pieces. Or let's say uh, we're going to talk about this next week. So let's say let's uh, discuss on Thursday. I can write the word discuss. Then come out too good. Uh, Thursday. Now notice with this particular board, uh, or not my board, but here, I don't have an option here, a floating toolbar, like I did have in Excel and in Microsoft Word, where it showed me that squiggly line and that double A feature. What I have here is a drop-down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pen down. 
I'm going to go to my drop down menu on my floating toolbar. And when I click on that, notice here I can save the ink notes. I can also insert as an image. So for here, I don't really want to insert that as a text. I'm going to insert that as an image. And I can go to insert as an image. And there it goes. And now it's putting it as an image. And so now, if I was to go and click on that, if I can get that to show up here, yeah, maybe not. But normally, this would be an image that I can move around in my particular document. So let's say I should be able to click on that, but it's not working today. And that, that's OK. But you could move things around and so forth. So now this is a permanent part of that particular document. Now let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I, I wanted to have my notes, but I didn't want to actually save it to my particular PowerPoint. Well, I can also do another option. In fact, let me advance to another slide to demonstrate that. I'm going to go advance to another slide. There it goes. Now let's say I was writing, marking this particular document up. Let's see the average professional spends. Click on that. And let's say I wanted to keep a copy of that, but I wanted to preserve my, well, I kind of touched my screen and it went away, so we can do that again. So let me go ahead and just draw a circle around that instead. I wanted to preserve that image, but I didn't want to preserve it on my actual document. I'm going to go and insert that into my smart notebook as a picture. So I can go to my drop down menu here, and I can also go to save ink notes. And when I go to Save Ink Notes, it's going to take a snapshot of that particular image and send it to Smart Notebook. So I'm going to click on that. Notice you heard the camera slide, hopefully. Save an Ink Notes. It opened up my Microsoft or my, I'm sorry, my Smart Notebook software. There it is. I can always refer back to that at, at another time. So I have that document here of my notes. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. But let's say I go back here, and I don't want that particular note anymore. When I advance my slide, it's going to go away, go back. It's still there. However, if I don't save that, it'll, it will not add it to my particular document. Or you could always grab the pen or your eraser. And I got the eraser side of my pen. And you should be able to erase that line. And it's working very well today, which is great. And I can go and erase whatever line that I had. So it's up to you how you want to interact if you're a particular notes with your students. Uh, it's, Again, a lot of that has, has to be with personal preference as you're teaching, your, your teaching style also. Now, one thing also I want you to remember is, even though you're using the Smart Notebook, all your PowerPoint commands will still be there. So notice over here on my drop-down menu, I do have my PowerPoint commands. I can go to a certain slide in my particular pr project. I can go to black and unblack my screen, so that way if I want to stop the presentation just for a moment, to get the audience's attention or my students' attention, I can go ahead and do that. I can also print that slide. And I can go to the Show PowerPoint menu. But also what's really neat, though, is SmartBoard has this, morning, uh, this Smart Floating Tools. When I click on that, if it comes up here, and it didn't, it might be just a product of my particular board. Um, you, normally, you would get a floating toolbar on that particular piece that you're normally accustomed to with the floating toolbar. Uh, I'm not getting that. And that would normally be on either the left or the right si hand side of my screen, but that's OK. As long as I got access to my pens down here, I'm able to interact with my particular session that I have now. So this pretty much shows what you can do with Inkware and PowerPoint. I hope that you decide to use this in your classroom a lot more. And again, the more you use your technology, the easier it's going to be, and the more seamless your instruction is going to be with your particular students in your classroom. But this pretty much wraps it up for Inkware today. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, try using it in your classroom.